Hi, I'm Dr. Gupta. I'm the Medical Director of Infection Prevention here. I think most of you here at Silver Cross know me. Um, we wanted to talk today a little bit about what's going on with this new surge in COVID that we're seeing um, related to the Delta variant um, and also about the importance and the safety of the COVID vaccine um, as we're seeing cases continue to go up, not just here, but also around the country. Joining me today is uh, a nurse I've known for a long time, Sherry Mladic, uh, one of our uh, longstanding Silver Cross nurses. She's been uh, on the forefront of really taking care of the COVID patients since the beginning um, and has really become you know, kind of an expert, not just on COVID, but also the things related to COVID. And you know, we talk all the time yes. about all these issues um, and you, you always have really good insight. And so that's why I wanted you to join me today. Thank you. Um, so, I'm proud to represent the COVID unit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I, I wanted this to be kind of a, a conversation um, with the staff about, um, about what's going on because I think there can be a lot of misconceptions, a lot of confusion, uh, fear, not just about getting COVID, but also just about the vaccine um, and what we can do you know, to kind of all get through this together. And I know you, know, you go to all the different units. Um, when you float, you talk to a lot of people around the hospital and so I know you have really just a great perspective and you've been here how long now? 20 years. Yeah, so um, <laughs> we've known each other for 20 years yes. for as long as I've been here, which is 18 <laughs> years now, so. And um, I have to say, it seemed like we were in the clear a couple of months ago. Yeah. Our unit in particular had gotten down to one patient. I was, was waiting amazing. for the day that there was gonna be zero yeah. and then it just slowly built again. What happened? That was great. Um, uh, really, it actually did get under control. Our positivity rate in the state was down to a half percent. I mean, numbers we never saw since the beginning. Um, what happened is the Delta variant. Uh, this new uh, form of COVID is so much more contagious uh, than what we had before. It's almost like a new virus. It's almost like a new pandemic starting. Um, the original COVID we had, you could spread pretty easily. You know, we saw that for sure. We saw a lot of cases. Um, there are some viruses we think of in infectious diseases, the most contagious viruses, chickenpox, measles. A lot of people will remember chickenpox parties, people my age, and, <laughs> yeah, um, where you just had to send your kid to someone's house, they had chickenpox, your kid would get it. That's how contagious this COVID is. And yes. And how does somebody know if they have the Delta variant? At this point, it's all Delta, basically. When, when it started uh, in the U.S. about six weeks ago, it was about 10% Delta and then rapidly became over 90%. And at this point, it's basically all Delta. And that's what happens with these viruses. When a new, more contagious virus comes along, it becomes the only one. And so who do you think is like the primary thing now? Who's getting COVID now? The main group getting COVID now, I mean, to say it most broadly, are the unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the risk of getting COVID if you're unvaccinated is so much higher than if you're vaccinated. And what we're seeing now that we didn't see before, um, younger people. Uh, I looked at the, the, the last time I looked at the data from the state about a week ago, um, all the age groups below 50 had higher rates than all the age groups above 50. Um, lots definitely. of reasons. For, yeah, definitely yeah. seeing that on You're the floor. You're seeing that on the floor, yeah. Yes, I absolutely. Know. Yeah, I mean, we can look at the list right now and see the age distribution. It's not what it was before. Those people are, are out, uh, out and about a lot more and they're also lower rates of vaccination. Pretty much in the state, locally, around the country, anywhere where you have lower rates of vaccination is where we're seeing more cases. And so those are the ones who are getting it. Are the patients sicker now than in the past? And is this variant more dangerous? You tell me, what are you seeing? <laughs> I'm, seeing <laughs> I'm seeing younger, sicker, faster Yeah. The, yeah. The, when they turn. It's mm -hmm. really scary. It's, yes. And when we had our surge in April, it wasn't like that. No. You know, the patients would come in, we'd give them the treatments we have and they would pretty much get better and go home. Now it's kind of like it was at the beginning again. They're, they're, they're much sicker, but the difference is now they're, they're younger too, which is mm -hmm. scary. Um, they're going to the ICU faster. Um, the, th this Delta variant is not just more contagious. The thing that really scares me about it, it's also more deadly. It's more likely to cause severe disease and more likely to kill you. And what can we do about that? It all comes down to vaccination. You know, there are other things, of course, social distancing, masking, those things are still important. They still do help. Um, but the real key to getting this under control is getting vaccinated. We've seen the data, um, you know, more than enough data now that if you're vaccinated, you're less likely to get COVID, you're less likely to spread COVID, you're less, much less likely to end up hospitalized and die from COVID. Um, earlier this week, I think we had 39 COVID patients in house. Only two were vaccinated and those two were here for something else. They weren't even here for COVID. They were surprised to find out they had COVID. Pretty much everyone we're seeing um, 
hospitalized and getting very sick from COVID is unvaccinated right now. And I heard you can still get COVID and spread it even if you're vaccinated. And I think that in the beginning, people thought that that risk would be much lower. But uh, now people are saying, what's the point? And yeah. then I might need a booster, so I might need another <laughs> vaccine. I mean, yeah. these are the things that the, the true issues we hear. Absolutely. And it's, it's because it's been going on and because it continues to spread and mutate. This Delta variant now, if you get COVID um, and you're vaccinated, you can spread it. That wasn't true with the previous mm -hmm. variants. Um, but here's the point. If you're vaccinated, there are three ways in which that keeps you from spreading it to people that you care about. You're just so much less likely to get COVID in the first place, so you can't spread it if you don't get it. Mm -hmm. Two, um, now we know that the amount of time that you're shedding the virus and able to spread it is probably about a third as long as if you're unvaccinated. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is pretty new information. So if, um, if, if you're unvaccinated, probably spread it for about 10 days. If you're vaccinated, about three or four days. And then the third way is that um, the amount of live virus that you're shedding as opposed to dead virus is also lower if you're vaccinated. So significant benefits to being vaccinated, even though it's still possible to spread, still much less likely. And so if you already had COVID, we hear people say this, why should I get a vaccine? They feel that natural immunity is like yeah. permanent. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it is true. You do get some immunity from natural infection. Um, I was just reading Monday morning, there was some data that came out. The antibody levels you get from the vaccine, about five times higher than what you get from natural infection. And so that right there, you're, you're already getting much better mm -hmm. protection from the vaccine. There was um, a data from Canada recently that if you have the vaccine versus natural infection, your risk of having severe COVID is about two and a half times higher if your immunity comes from infection versus getting it from mm -hmm. the vaccine. So your, your protection, clinical protection is, is much better too. That's good to know. And then people ask that question a lot. Now I feel better prepared to answer that one too. And so people are hearing and reading a lot of scary stuff about the vaccine. And how are they supposed to believe it's safe? And what does this new recent FDA approval really mean? Yeah. I want to start off by saying I don't blame anybody who looks at all this stuff that's out there and says, I don't know what to believe. I think it's totally reasonable because it's so hard to wade through all that information. FDA approval means a lot. Um, the, our country has probably the most strict approval process in the entire world. You know, 90% of drugs that they try to get through don't get through because the FDA rejects them. We've given hundreds of millions of doses of this vaccine. Other vaccines that have been approved in the past have been approved on you know, 10,000, 20,000 doses. So the amount of data we have to look at, um, that the FDA has to look at to approve this vaccine is so much more. Um, so it really does mean a lot because if, if there were patterns of real serious bad consequences from the vaccine, they would have found it. Um, and as far as you know, trusting that it's safe, I mean, you gotta know, you have to, you have to look at who's, who's telling you it's safe and who's telling you it's not safe. You know, um, the, the, the people who are saying it's safe, people like me, you know, I mean, I, this is what I do for a living, is I, I not only treat infectious disease, but here at the hospital, my role is to keep the employees safe. And that's all, you know, when I wake up in the morning, that's what I wanna do. Um, people who are telling you it's not safe, they have other agendas a lot of the time. So do we even know what's in the vaccine? And a lot of people say, oh, it was rushed through. They, you know, where did they get this technology? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do know. It's, I, I hear so many people say, we don't even know what's in the vaccine. The components are all published online. You can, you know, we know exactly what's in the vaccine. The nice thing about this technology is it's not new. Uh, mRNA technology has been around for 20 years. They've been working on it, developing it, testing it in humans. Um, this is the first time we really needed to use it for anything, and that's why we're using it now, but totally not a new technology. Um, the nice thing about mRNA vaccines is they're so simple. There's barely anything in these vaccines compared to other vaccines that we've been giving for 50 years. We've been giving all different kinds of vaccines for so long. These are amongst the safest as far as the components go. Now, yes. And the main concern, one of them, you know, especially I work with a younger population of nurses, is about women who are already pregnant, women hoping to be pregnant. Does it affect my fertility? Yeah. You know, my family planning? I mean, what would you say to those people concerned about that? This is one of the most important things we need to talk about, for sure. Not just because in the hospital we have a lot of mm -hmm. uh, uh, employees who, who are in that category, but in general, the fear around pregnancy and fertility with this vaccine is completely unfounded and it's dangerous. So at the beginning of, 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 of the vaccination rollout, there was some guy online who found some 
sequence of something in the vaccine and said it's going to attack the placenta. He just made it up. There was absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, and so because of that, unfortunately, a lot of people think it can affect pregnancy or fertility, and it totally can't. They have done studies. They just came out about a month ago. Um, if you're vaccinated, if you're unvaccinated, and then you get pregnant, and they looked at the rates of miscarriage, bad outcomes, completely the same with both groups, no effect whatsoever. Um, and so the same thing would apply to fertility. There would be no effect on that. Um, but we're really seeing what's re really scary. We were, we were talking about this a little while ago, is the effect of COVID in pregnancy. Um, is uh, it's so much more dangerous to have uh, COVID when you're pregnant as far as your outcome as a mom and the effect on the baby. You know, we, we've seen, we didn't see this in April when we had our last surge and this surge now, we're seeing unvaccinated pregnant mothers come in, get very sick, lose their babies. It's really, really tragic and it doesn't have to be that way. It's totally preventable. And what about blood clots? That's the other one. Everybody knows, everybody knows somebody <laughs> who had somebody yeah. get blood clots. Yeah. Listen, I'm not going to say that there are no adverse effects from these vaccines. Everything we do in medicine, every time I give an antibiotic, something bad can mm -hmm. happen. Um, anything we do can have bad outcomes. Um, but at this point, you know, with how contagious the Delta variant is, um, you're really choosing between getting the vaccine or getting COVID. This Delta variant is so much more contagious. Anyone who's not vaccinated at some point, if they're not going to get Delta, they're going to get the next variant. Because in order for another variant to come along, it has to be more contagious than Delta in order to take over. And so at this point, you're choosing between getting the vaccine and taking the small risk or getting COVID and taking the huge risk. We can talk about that a little bit later, but specifically with um, blood clots, the rates of blood clot after the vaccine um, are about 20 times less than the rates of blood clot after having COVID. We so, treat for that all the time, <laughs> prophylactically, yes. You see it upstairs, we yeah. And, and you know, we see patients even after they've had COVID, they go home and they recover fully, and they come back with a, with a you know, sometimes a catastrophic blood clot, because the effects of COVID last for a lot longer than any side effects you can get from the vaccine. And what about children? I mean, that's always the, you know, this is a hot spot, especially people going back to school. And, you know, the, before it was that kids don't really get sick from COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not just about death. You know, kids now we're seeing long COVID, you know, these, these, these long-term effects, especially with kids, you know, how devastating is brain fog? How devastating is difficulty breathing? Nothing in the vaccine stays in your body. Everything in the vaccine goes away after a couple of days. And so all the side effects we've ever seen from, from vaccines have all gone away within the first few weeks. And after that, there's no side effects anymore. And what about the effects on the heart? Some people say the vaccine can cause arrhythmias and things. When we started giving the vaccine, there were a lot of reports of these kind of palpitations, heart racing and stuff. Again, because COVID now is so much more contagious, the rates of those things are about 20 times less than what you get with actual COVID. I mean, you see these yes. patients too. Mm -hmm. I talked to em employees here. There was, was one person who was telling me she had COVID, mild case, didn't mm -hmm. really think too much of it. Since then, she's been dealing with what she calls a nightmare of her heart great going from the 40s to the 140s, back and forth, can't do anything about it, has been seeing cardiologists. I am seeing that in, in, in the general population, people that have had COVID. Can it change your DNA? This is the one I see most often, I think, is that the, the vaccine will, because it's mRNA, I think it can change your DNA and have permanent effects. It can't, there's absolutely no way. There's two enzymes you would need to change RNA to DNA and affect your DNA, but not in the vaccine. So it's just physically impossible. And of course, you know, again, where somebody knows somebody, there are the reports of people dying after getting the vaccine. And how can you say it's safe when the COVID death rate is so low? <laughs> yeah, the, the COVID death rate has, has come down. At the beginning mm -hmm. of the pandemic, it was 14 percent in the U.S. And now I think it's two or three percent, maybe even less, um, which is great. Um, uh, the thing to remember about reports of people dying after the vaccine the way those reports, there's, a, there's an online database that you can report. Anyone who gets the vaccine, um, if something bad happens to them, they can report it. Um, and it gets put in there as a death after the vaccine. Doesn't mean it was caused by the vaccine. So far, no deaths have been related to the vaccine, at least the last time I checked. Um, you know, people unfortunately pass away all the time. Um, and just because it happens after the vaccine doesn't mean it was from the vaccine. Um, the other thing to remember is, you know, right now in the US, 99% of deaths from COVID are in the unvaccinated. That's, that, that's almost all you need to know about the effectiveness of these vaccines is that if you're vaccinated, your chances of dying from this are almost zero. 
and your chance of dying from the vaccine are basically zero. But if you're not, you're really taking a huge gamble. Again, with how contagious this Delta variant is, not getting the vaccine, you're almost choosing to get COVID and then suffer all the consequences. So what happened next? next? Will this ever go away? <laughs> well, what happens next depends on a lot of things. You know, um, uh, best case scenario is that a lot more people get vaccinated and we get this under control. There's no more new variants. And then we can finally go back to, you know, normal life, whatever <laughs> that was like before. <laughs> um, second best case scenario, I mean, I hate to say it, it's terrifying, is that we reach herd immunity because people don't get vaccinated and they all get COVID. Um, that would be devastating to millions of families in America, mm -hmm. to the healthcare system, to healthcare workers who are already exhausted. But it's a real possibility. Um, the real unfortunate thing about this new variant is because it's so contagious, almost anyone who's not vaccinated at some point will get COVID. COVID can't go away on its own. So you either get immunity through vaccination or immunity through infection, but you have to go through the infection first. And um, you know the rates of, 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 of bad outcomes from the vaccine is maybe a few in a million. The rates of bad outcomes from COVID is a few in 10. Hmm. One to three in 10 people will have a bad outcome from having COVID, whether it's brain fog, difficulty breathing, death, you know, prolonged ICU state. There's so many things that can happen um, from getting COVID that to, to get through this by having so many Americans get COVID would just be devastating. If you are, are, are afraid or unsure about the safety of these vaccines, you don't need to be. The fear mongering out there uh, is, is, is not based on, on, on the reality on the ground. The, the rates of bad outcomes from this vaccine are just the same basically as all the other vaccines we use. And the most important point is that um, this new variant and perhaps the next variant after that are so contagious that you're almost assured of catching COVID at some point in the future if you don't get the vaccine. And the bad things that will happen to you after you get COVID are so much more likely and so much more devastating. And it doesn't have to be that way. It's totally preventable. Um, so uh, thanks again. Um, and I hope to see you around Silver Cross.